Yo guys, Punk Rat with another video. So I've seen a couple videos covering this topic titled The Most OP Items of Classic WoW. And honestly, those videos were so far off that I felt I needed to make this one in order to restore balance to the universe. It's a pretty well known fact that there's a lot of trashy items in Classic WoW. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's also some insanely bonkers items. Items with such notoriety and demand that they can single-handedly be the catalyst to the destruction of an entire guild by the drama that ensues over who gets the item. I'm mainly going to be focusing on items that are so good that they'll pretty much last you till late Nax or far beyond their specific raid tier. Or Nax items that are so good that they were used you know, pretty far, pretty deep into the Burning Crusade. With that being said, let's go over some of the most OP items in Classic WoW. Let's get into it. Alright, so first up, we've got probably the most well-known items on the list. The Blackwing Lair Trinkets. I don't mean the class specific trinkets, but rather the ones that drop off the Black Drakes and the one that drops off Nefarian. Although I will add one class specific trinket just because it's bonkers. So we've got, first up, Neltharion's Tear, which is probably the most infamous one on the list. Casters jump at this trinket like a 12 year old schoolgirl jumping over a metal concert barrier trying to get a lock of Justin Bieber's hair. It's insane. I mean, it's just flat stats, but it's the exact stats that would make any mage hard as an ice block. 44 spell power and 2% chance flat. Yeah, I said it. 2% spell hit. Absolutely insane for the gear level of BWL. Then we've got Drake Fang Talisman. Probably equally as sought after as Neltharion's tier, to be honest, and it's pretty much the melee equivalent. It's got 56 attack power, 2% melee hit, and 1% chance to dodge. This item is also wanted by tanks once they have their defense cap, just to increase their threat per second. And the dodge obviously doesn't hurt for a tank. Insanely good trinket, and it's pretty hard to replace. It drops off Ebonrock. Alright, so the third one in BWL is called Stylene's Impeding Scarab. This is the best in slot tanking trinket from start to finish, from BWL all the way through Nax, even in full tier 3. It's actually so damn incredible that tanks in the Burning Crusade level 70 tanks would go back to Blackwing Lair just to get it, so you'll prioritize it over many of the lower tier level 70 alternatives. It's got 5% chance to block, increased block value which increases the absorbed damage on each block and increases the damage of your abilities that use shields like Shield Slam. And it's also got 13 defense. It drops off Flame Gore. Alright, so next we've got Rejuvenation Gem, which is the best in slot trinket for all healers till late Nax, pretty much till 4 Horsemen and Saffron. Similar to all the other trinkets, it's just a massive amount of stats. It gives you plus 66 bonus healing, 9 MP5, and you know, I think it's pretty self explanatory, just a very well itemized stat trinket for the raid tier. It's got better stats than pretty much all of the healing weapons at this content point. This drops off the 3 Black Drakes in Blackwing Lair. And of course, as I stated earlier, we've got the Mind Quickening Gem, which is the mage specific class trinket. One of the best trinkets for mages in both PvE and specifically in PvP. I personally like it way more in PvP, but it's really good for both. It's basically an Icy Veins like ability or Icy Veins like on use, increasing your casting speed by 33% so it's even stronger than Icy Veins. It's so good in PvP, man. I mean, you just pop it and cast a super quick polymorph that can switch the battle or change the flow of the battle entirely. Stellar Trinket and it drops off Veilstraz the Corrupt. Okay, so now let's just get all of the trinkets out of the way and go straight into Nax Trinkets. First we've got the on use pop trinkets, very similar to many that we see in the Burning Crusade and later on. They've got a base amount of spell power, healing power or attack power with an on use equip that you pop that gives you an extra bonus on top of that for 20 seconds. So first we've got the Restrained Essence of Saffron, which is a 40 spell power base with 130 uh, spell power pop on top of that for 20 seconds. Then you've got the Slayer's Crest, which is a 64 attack power base with a 260 attack power pop for 20 seconds on top. Then we've got the Eye of the Dead, which is a 70 bonus healing effect base and a 450 healing pop, and all three of these trinkets drop off Saffron. Alright, so now we've got these trinkets, which are all also really good, but some of them are better than others. But again, as I stated, still top end trinkets. The best one is Kiss of the Spider, which is the best in slot rogue trinket in the game, from my understanding at least. It gives 1% melee hit, 1% melee crit, and an on use buff that increases your attack speed by 20% for 15 seconds, so a haste pop that you stack with your slice and dice. It drops off my Exena. Then we've got Warmth of Forgiveness, which is a base 10 MP5 with an on use that restores 500 mana on a 3 minute cooldown. So it's kind of like a little extra mana pot that doesn't share CD with any consumable. This one drops off the 4 horsemen. 
And the last one is Glyph of Deflection for tanks, which has a 3% block chance, block value increased by 23, and an on use that increases your block value by 235 for 20 seconds. This trinket is really good when tanking multiple mobs on a warrior, since it'll reduce each strike by 235 extra damage when blocked, added on top of your current base block value. So if you have many mobs that are hitting you for about 600 damage each, it'll reduce each strike by a substantial amount when blocked. And it's pretty good also as an offensive trinket for TPS as well since when you pop it it'll actually increase your block value which increases the damage that your shield slam does significantly. But from my understanding it's less prioritized than Stylene's and I've even seen people say that Drake Fang Talisman is, is better than it just because you want to be doing as much threat as possible. This one also drops off uh, Saffron. Alright, now some of you guys might question this one and why it's on the list, but as stated, this is about items that are hard to replace and last for a really long time, and this is definitely one of those items. It's called the Ancient Karaji Ripper, which is a one-handed sword that drops off Fancris in AQ40. The main reason why it's so good is the attack speed is 2.8 seconds slow, and I know you guys are going to be in the comment section saying, but Punkrat, attack speed normalization. Yeah, I know it, but still, slower weapons do more damage with your abilities, even after the normalization. This weapon is the best one-handed sword for a long time, especially for humans and rogues as sword spec. So rogues and human fury warriors will battle over this one, they'll battle to the death over this weapon. These next two items are from Nefarian, the last boss in Black Queen Lair, and are very hard to replace for a long time. This one specifically for rogues and fury warriors is pretty much the best neck in the game. It's called Prester's Talisman of Connivory. It has 30 agility and 1% chance to hit. 30 agility is extremely good on both rogues and fury warriors. 30 agility is equal to 1% chance to crit for rogues. Well, 29 agility is, you know, it's 1% crit, but you guys get it, same thing. And it's a bunch of attack power for rogues as well. For fury warriors, 20 agility is one crit. So 30 agility would give you 1.5% chance to crit and one hit on top of that. Technically, Onyxia's Talisman is better for Fury Warriors, I guess, since it gives 12 agility plus the 1 crit, so it's an extra 2 agility worth of crit, which is an extra 0.1% chance to crit, uh, and it gives stamina, but it's basically the same, and they're both insanely good. But Prester's is the best rogue necklace in the game all the way through Nax, so it has to be on this list. So staying on Nefarian, as I just stated, we've got Mishundare, Circlet of the Mind Flare. This is the best mage helm in the game till tier 3 off Thaddeus. It's so good because it gives a flat 2% chance to crit on top of everything else that it provides. As a fire mage, crit is your number one priority, so you can understand why this helm is so highly valued. It's also arguably the best paladin helm in the game, some would say even better than tier 3 since paladins need as much crit as possible. It's definitely great on them too and of course warlocks. When you get to Nefarian, your mages and warlocks are clutching their bum holes hoping for this and Naltharion's tier to drop. And if it does, be ready for friendships and loyalties to end real fast. They'll throw their morals out the window like a smack addict stealing their kid's Nintendo Switch for the next fix. Now keeping on the same line as Mishundare, we've got another heavy hitter in the crit department. This is one of the earliest god mode items that lasts you a super long time for paladins and mages specifically again. It's called Robes of Volatile Power. Paladins will rock this item till AQ40, and mages will rock it till Deep Nax pretty much. It's from Molten Core actually, so you can get this pretty early and not worry about replacing your chest piece for a really long time. It gives all of the stats that you want, with a whopping 2% chance to crit. It's basically itemized in the exact same way as Mishundare with a bit less base stats and spell power. It has a chance to drop off of all of the Flamewalker bosses in Molten Core, so Shazra, Gehennis, Lucifron, and Sulphuron. There's a good chance that you'll get one, so try to get it early and you'll be set on a chess piece for months to come as a mage. Okay, so this item is the only crafted item on this list. It's called Lionheart Helm, but of course, you already knew that. You probably guessed it the moment I said crafted. This is the best plate DPS helmet in the game, and you can pretty much get it right away. That's right, on a fresh level 60, you can boom, get the best helmet in the game. You'll use it from MC all the way to Nax. Nothing beats it, not a single helmet in the game. It's a total glass cannon item, providing nothing but damage stats without any stamina at all. It has 18 strength, 2% chance to crit, and 2% chance to hit. I mean, 2% of each. Effective 4% total of your two most important stats. It's insane. Fury Warriors, this should be your number one focus. Get farming. 
Titanic leggings also are cool too. I excluded them on this list in general, but I'll just add it in because you guys are going to be mad at me. Okay, now this item is something that 99.9% .9 of you guys have zero chance of getting. It's the biggest time sink in the game, but the reward is more than worth it. Yep, the rank 14 weapons, specifically the rank 14 one-handers. These are pretty much the best weapons in the game for rogues and fury warriors until Kel'Thuzad. These rank 14 weapons are available before AQ40 though and won't be replaced for an eternity. They're so good due to their insane base DPS and extremely slow attack speed. The main hand has an attack speed of 2.9 seconds slow, which is even slower than the aforementioned Karaji Ripper. These weapons are absolutely insane, especially the swords on a line side for humans with the increased sword skill. And a sword rogue, specifically a human sword rogue with these, the racial plus the actual sword spec, is going to top the meters. You get these from quitting your job and grinding pre-mades till you pretty much die of starvation. I wouldn't recommend it. This next one is kind of a little last minute addition that I popped in here, mainly because it's a hugely notorious item that rogues and warriors die for in the early days of Nax. It's quite easy to get if you're lucky on drops since it actually drops off trash mobs in Nax. I've seen guilds pop these out like a promiscuous baby mama popping out little buggers. It's called Misplaced Servo Arm. It's a one-handed mace with a strong base DPS and again a slow attack speed of 2.8. It's very popular with hemorrhage rogues specifically in PvP due to the slow speed and the on hit effect which blasts the target for nature damage which will bypass armor and overall just add to your burst combo and stun locks. It's obviously great for fury warriors in PvE as well and overall just a hugely sought after item. Alright so really quick I'm just going to add all of these in in one shot just because I know people will complain if I don't and honestly they belong on the list just because of how they last pretty deep into the burning crusade or early burning crusade. But Kel'Thuzad dropped some insanely broken weapons. He's got King's Fall, Gressel Dawn of Ruin, the Sword of a Thousand Truths aka the Hungering Cold, Might of Menethil, the Rubian Slave Maker, Hammer of the Twisting Nether, and all of these items are broken. They're so freaking strong that they'll basically last you until Karazhan, Deep Karazhan, and be better than all the base level 70 blues that you could get in the Burning Crusade. Pretty self-explanatory. The Hungering Cold is especially awesome due to the increased sword skill that it gives, which is great when paired with another sword in your main hand. It's also a great tanking weapon, but generally I'd say it's a great offhand for melee DPS who are running double swords, especially if you're human. Everything off KT is absolutely insane, so you get it, it all lasts pretty much till uh, Karazhan. Except for obviously Soul Seeker, a Wraith Blade I'd say is better off Maxina. Uh, but you know, this stuff's kind of boring, just insanely good weapons, you guys get it, and let's move on. Okay, now finally, last but certainly not least, we've got the cream of the crop here, the legendaries. First, of course, Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker. This item is crazy, especially as a tank. It was one of the most sought after tanking blades in the game, even in the Burning Crusade for warrior tanks. You'd see tanks in Black Temple running with it. The reason why it's so good is the equip effect which is basically an AoE elemental blast. It's no secret that tanks struggle with AoE tanking in Classic without the right tricks and tools. This is one of those tools. It constantly procs on mobs all around you, blasting them for over 200 elemental damage each time it procs. Absolutely insane. Takes you to another level immediately as a tank. It's obviously also very good as an offhand weapon for any melee DPS, you can imagine why. Don't really need to explain it. Come on, it's Thunder Fury, that's all I gotta say. And last item on the list, Atiesh, Great Staff of the Guardian, which is Medivh's Guardian Staff. You get this by collecting all the splinters of Atiesh in Nax, 40 of them, which drop off of all of the bosses except for Saffron and Kel'Thuzad, and then killing Kel'Thuzad to get the head of Atiesh. So there's four versions of this staff. The mage one which gives you 2% chance to hit, 150 spell power, with an aura that increases your party's spell crit by 2% within 30 yards, which affects you as well so it's almost like a boomkin aura. The druid one which gives you 300 healing bonus, 11 mp5 to all party members within 30 yards, 420 attack power and cat bear blah 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 you get it. The warlock one which gives you a 2% chance to crit, 150 spell power and 33 spell power as an aura to all the group members within 30 yards. And finally the priest one which gives you a 300 healing bonus and increases the party's healing bonus by 62 on top of that within 30 yards. And not to mention, the staff creates a portal to Karazhan to fall in line with that Medivh lore. 
All right, folks, I'm sure I could have added a couple more items. And as I was doing this, I kept adding extra ones and extra ones, making the list bigger and bigger and bigger. I had to stop at some point. And that's why I just quickly added in the KT weapons and MSA because I knew people would complain if I didn't put Might of Manithil specifically in some other items. But who am I kidding? Some of you guys are going to complain no matter what I do, right? If you feel that I missed any really egregious ones though, just feel free to add it in the comment section like usual. You know, you guys know that I read all of the comments, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, of course, you know the drill, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.